Hi everyone, this is Sam, and in today's video, I want to walk you through a complete end-to-end -end CICD pipeline uh, using Jenkins, GitHub, Docker Hub, um, and scanning the images using Cystic Secure. Uh, as an added bonus, if you stick around till the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through some real-time security with Cystic Secure where I'm basically going to exec into a, con a live running container, run some commands, and um, I'll show you through Cystic Secure how I can show you, even though uh, the container might be long gone, you can still see what uh, I did inside that container, what commands I ran, even what files uh, that I downloaded to that container and what's inside that file. So stick around to the end of the video to get that uh, added bonus. Uh, but for now, let's take a, a quick look at this diagram that I have here. It's a little bit busy, but uh, we'll walk through it uh, slowly. So I have my development machine. I'm working on my Mac here, you know, um, uh, developing my code. And then I commit the change. It goes to a GitHub repo. It's connected to Jenkins. So Jenkins pulls the repo and it sees a, uh, a change. And... From there, it builds the image and pushes it to a dev repo in Docker Hub. Uh, Sysdig uh, has a plugin into Jek Jenkins, and what it will do as part of the build, um, it's going to scan that image that lives in Docker Hub. And then from there, Sysdig will pass the result back to Jenkins. If the result is a failure for the scan, then everything will stop, pipeline will stop. If, it's, uh, if it succeeds, then Jenkins is going to push the successful image, is going to re-tag it and push it back to Docker Hub into a production repository. And then finally, Jenkins will deploy the, the prod image to, um, to Kubernetes where my, um, my Python app is going to run. So that's the uh, workflow in a nutshell. And now let's go in piece by piece and see how this works. So first off, I want to show you the actual app. It's a very simple app. Um, it's a Python app using a bottle. So that's all it shows. Uh, uh, basically down to this endpoint, sysdig endpoint, it will give you this result. Now quickly uh, looking at uh, sysdig monitor, as I'm also monitoring this app with sysdig monitor, you can see under my entire infrastructure, under deployments and pods, uh, Kubernetes namespace, I'm just using the default Kubernetes namespace. The deployment name, I gave it is Cystic Jenkins. The pod name that we have here is Cystic Jenkins, uh, as you can see here, with this hash, and then down to the actual container ID. Now, if I click here, um, I have a nice diagram where you can see the, uh, the namespace default. Cystic Jenkins is my deployment. Uh, it says Dick Jenkins, and this hash is the pod down to the actual container ID here, the, the Docker whale. And if I click further, you can see the actual process running inside the container, which is Python. So this is very handy to uh, visualize how this application runs and what it talks to. In this case, I'm looking at response times. You can change this and uh, look at CPU usage, for example, and you can drill down just as I did before. To, uh, to get that. Um, and you can see, uh, of course, it's not running right now. There's barely anything, any traffic. But um, uh, this is helpful also to see the dependencies, who's talking to who, and if my application is talking to external services or internal services, I, I want to know about that. All right, cool. So let's quickly drill into the um, Python code and show you where it, uh, what it looks like. So let me pull this over here. Okay, so let's quickly go in here and uh, very simple code. Um, again, using bottle, and this is all I'm doing. I'm just writing uh, writing this out to the screen, and it's writing to port eight thousand and one. Now I'm changing the code here to show you when it deploys, how um, how this is going to be different from what we saw earlier. 
So I just added with CICD. So this is the Grox with CICD. Okay, cool. Now um, I want to show you the Docker file. Actually, let me go into the Docker file. And you can see it's pulling from Alpine, Python 2.7 Alpine. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to comment out this expose 22. And there's a reason for that. So as we build this image, I'm exposing port 22 in this image. And I put a policy in place to, um, to fail the image build with Sysdict Secure if I see any port that's exposed, exposing port 22 specifically. Um, I don't want anybody to be able to do to SSH into this. This is uh, definitely a security concern. All right, now that I made the change to the Docker file, I am going to commit this to my repo. Um, just give it a name here. Exposed port 22. And I'm going to push it to GitHub. Okay, cool. Now notice the um, notice the ID here, the git ID, the git commit ID. This is just a, a seven character hash um, that I'm going to be using for my image tags. So it just ends in 97A9. We'll keep an eye on that. And while this uh, while this pulls, so Jenkins is configured to pull uh, within two minutes if it sees a change in GitHub. So while that happens, I'll quickly walk you through the different stages. This is a pipeline build in Jenkins. I have six stages. I got a checkout stage. Uh, it's just checking out the code from GitHub. Uh, I got a build image. I'm going to build the image. Uh, I'll push the image to a dev repo in get in uh, in Docker Hub. Then Sysdig is going to take it over from here and scan the image that got pushed into the uh, into that uh, Docker Hub repo. As you can see, it's started now. We're in progress. Good. And then uh, if the scanning succeeds, we're going to push this to production. And then finally, we're going to deploy the app. So now the scanning is actually going through. And um, this should fail because we exposed port 22. And later, I'll show you the policy in Sysdig Secure that, uh, that fails the build. But basically, as a developer, you don't necessarily even need to go into Sysdig Secure. You can see the failures here. And there you go. We saw that it failed. And quickly look at the logs. Um, we'll use Anchor uh, under the hood here, but you can see that, that this has failed, of course. And what's neat here is that you can go into the actual build and with our Sysdig Secure plugin into Jenkins, you can go and see why this build failed. As you can see, Docker file exposes port 22, which is in policy file, denied ports list. Okay, cool. So now I know that this has failed. I know the reason why it failed. So as a developer, I can go back, change my code. So let's go back into the Docker file. Let's comment this uh, line here. So remove expose 22, let's exit. Uh, let's just say we removed the expose port 22. And let's push this once again. So now what we fix this. We have a new uh, git ID. In this case, it's AAEA. If I go back to actually the Docker Hub, while that actually pushes, this is the production repo. As you can see, that uh, that tag name doesn't show up there because it didn't get pushed to production because it failed in. Um, in dev and I can go to the dev repo and show you that oh well, we already we already pushed the new one but this was the old one 97A9 that didn't make it to production it's just living here in, in development but uh, I see that the uh, the scanning is already working so let's go back and look at the pipeline again see where we're at all right so scanning the image has succeeded as you can see here we're off to the next piece 
push successful is to production the app is already deployed so let's check and see if this changes and there you go we have already automatically deployed to kubernetes our new uh, version of the app everything succeeded if i want to verify here um, go back to the production repo on docker hub you can see that the tag got pushed to production of course and that's how it uh, the app is running so i can go here and take a quick look do a coop ctl get pods uh, i can see this pod and if i want to describe this pod there you go pulling image and here's the new image tag I can also describe the deployment to show you the image for, that's actually running here and there you go so here's the actual image that's running right now in production and that's the same image tag that we saw earlier so basically uh, we ran through the whole pipeline very quickly to show you how we can fail a build um, and how we can get it to work and how to automatically deploy as well. Now, we can also, I can all, I want to show you the actual um, policy in Cystic Secure. So if we go to the image scanning piece, scanning policies, and here's the default policy and you can see blacklist exposed ports port 22 and what the action you'll take is stop the build and that's exactly what we did and we stopped the build now there are other actions that you want to uh, take a look at as well so in this case if i have a high vulnerability severity and there's a an available fix um, i probably want to fail that build as well so um, you know there are a lot of triggers that you can play with and then uh, you can take a look at that so now i also want to show you the next piece which i promised at the beginning of this video which is the runtime security so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to go back here and look at my pods again and i'm going to exec into this pod and I want to show you the commands that I'm going to run here and how they're going to show up into in um, in cystic secure so I'm going to shell into this container I'm going to run some commands here okay so I can see what's inside the container um, yeah curl is not here so I'm going to add curl while this adds I'm gonna go over here and I want to grab this file see what's inside this file you've been owned um, okay cool I'm gonna exit out of this container now what will happen is, um, if you go back to Cystic Secure, and I want to show you the policies that we have here. And one of the policies is a terminal shell in a container. The way we define this policy is high severity. And if anybody does anything inside a container, because in production, you should never ever have anybody needing to uh, shell into a container. That, that should never happen really in development yeah maybe if you want to make changes but once since you, once you're in, you're in production you don't want to do that so what are the things you can do okay so i can filter and say show me the entire infrastructure i want to uh, apply the policy to everything or maybe development or production and so on or specific applications uh, containers um, in this case the action that i want to take is do nothing or i can kill the container i can pause the container or I can store, um, and this is really the power of behind Sysdig, I can create a capture file, an SCAP file, which is a system K2 
capture file for all system calls that have occurred 10 seconds before and 50 seconds after the, the event. To, so even if the container dies, um, we have the record of what has happened inside that container because we, we will ship this to the back end so that we have this, uh, this data for you. Okay, so let's take a look at the policy events and see what has fired. All right, cool. So in the last 10 minutes, we saw the terminal shelling container event here. Let's walk through that. Okay, I see some commands, uh, but first you can see the scope. So the, de the default namespace, the Cystic Jenkins deployment, as we would expect. Here's the pod name, the container ID, uh, host name, the, the host that actually occurred on, and a summary, a shell was spawned in a container with an attached terminal, user is root, and so on. Uh, we can take a look at the commands that ran inside here, and uh, here's the shell command that started it all. Um, you can see me downloading curl here. Here's curl downloading this file, danger.txt, uh, into this working directory app. Uh, you can see the process IDs as well, and so on. So this is great, but we can take this a step further, and we can go into the captures because we have a capture for this. Remember, we de de define the capture. So let's take a look at the capture file and see what other details we can get from here. So clicking on this tile, it shows us when the Cystic Secure notification occurred. So you can see 10 seconds in, and then it started to record. Uh, well, it started to record from the beginning. It's a rolling buffer. So we're seeing 10 seconds prior to the event and 50 seconds after the event, the same way we define the policy. And um, what I want to do here is I want to look at the executed commands. So I'm going to drill down here to see all the commands that, that occurred. This is good, but I want to go and look at the containers um, that ran. And here's my container. So I'm going to drill down into this one. That's the container I care about. And uh, if we go back to the commands that ran here, here they are again. So shell and so on. Um, but I'm interested in looking at uh, maybe drilling deeper into the curl and looking at the files um, that we have in here. And here's my app danger text that we talked about earlier that we, I saw that we downloaded. So I want to look at the IO stream, see what was inside here. And there you have it. The, the contents of the file itself that we saw earlier, uh, we've captured that so you can see that as well. So it's very uh, uh, granular and deep in the way we're able to, to capture this information. And the reason we can do that is the way we're instrumented. Uh, this is a very unique way of instrumenting uh, our agent, and this is at the kernel level. So we see every single system call going uh, through the kernel. And if you guys are familiar with Wireshark at all, um, this is where our heritage comes from. So instead of capturing uh, PCAP files and looking at network traffic, we're actually looking at system calls. And from there, we can get this level of granularity, this level of depth. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you guys to, uh, to see the entire CICD workflow, um, the image scanning piece with Cystic Secure, and finally the runtime security with forensics. So you can see what happened if somebody, you know, in this case, uh, shelled into a container. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.